Happy Transfiguration Sunday. Today is a feast for the eyes, right? I mean, look at him. I got a couple of images here that we're going to look at. You, if you search online for images of the transfiguration, you'll see some things like this. So we've got the cloud and the lights, right? Then let's look at the next one. We've got Jesus, white robes, Moses and Elijah, Moses there with the tablets of the commandments, the disciples cowering in fear. All right, one more. And here we go, we have again, Jesus, Moses and Elijah, the bright light of His clothing, the shining of His face, and the disciples in fear. What it must have been like to be there. What would it have been like to see Jesus in all of His glory? It would have been incredible, right? And we, when we hear stories like this in the Bible and we see visuals of Jesus like this, I think we can't help but think this thought. If I had seen that, it would put all my doubts to rest. If I had seen that, it's a done deal. My faith would never be shaken. After all, seeing is believing, right? Yet at the pinnacle of this transfiguration moment, a cloud overshadows the mountain and the voice of God comes out of that cloud and says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And you might just gloss over that phrase, but if you think about it, it's a bit odd. I mean, look at these pictures. Don't you think God should say, this is my beloved son. Look at him. I mean, it's not every day you see that. And presumably that's why Jesus brought these disciples up on the mountain to show them a glimpse, a foretaste of His glory. So why does God the Father say, listen to Him? It seems to counteract the idea that we think, if we could just see Jesus, then I would believe. Right? Have you had that thought before? Maybe you didn't think about seeing Jesus, but maybe you just thought, just give me some sort of sign some visible sign. Well, take a look. Would this, would this be enough of a sign for you? I mean, I think this is kind of what we think of when we ask for a sign from God, some bright, shining figure in robes so white we can't even really look at them, accompanied by people who we thought were dead but aren't, a face so bright we can't look at it, and the glory of God overshadowing the mountain. Would that do it for you? Well, let's take a cue from the disciples in these pictures. Does it do it for them? What is their reaction to this wondrous sign from God? They're terrified. So terrified that Peter mumbles like a moron. The text even says that. He's just saying stuff because he's so scared he doesn't know what to say. He thinks they're there to have a tent party. But that's not what Jesus brought them there for. But we all know what comes after transfiguration. It's the season of Lent which leads into the passion of Jesus. And we know how the disciples fared between now and the cross. And really, even between now and the resurrection, it doesn't look so great. And it makes you wonder, what if this isn't enough? What if you see Jesus in all His glory and it still doesn't keep you on the straight and narrow? What if you get the sign that you've been asking for and still the next day you find yourself disobeying the will of of that heavenly Father. I don't know about you, but when I demand a sign from God, I'm, I think I'm too frightened to consider that possibility. It doesn't really go much further than show me something, God, much less thinking, well, what if He shows me something and it still doesn't do the trick? It still doesn't make me better.
Well, I think today we should question whether seeing really is believing. Because I think if seeing was believing when God the Father showed up in the cloud, He would have said, this is my beloved Son, look at Him. But instead, He says, listen to Him. Luther has sort of a famous quote, a semi-famous quote, where he says, if you want to see Jesus, you should take your eyes and put them in your ears. You see, the Scriptures tell us that seeing isn't the main aspect of faith. It is, as you probably have guessed it, hearing. The song we just sang says, Turn your eyes to Jesus, behold His wonderful face. How many of you have seen the face of Jesus? I haven't. Certainly not like the disciples did here. So what do we mean when we sing songs and when we pray prayers and we say that we want to see Jesus? It's kind of puzzling. Well, as we stand this Sunday on the precipice of the Lenten season... What does transfiguration tell us? And we like to locate ourselves in the narratives of the Bible, and so where do you think we belong in these pictures? I think the answer is pretty obvious for this account. We're the disciples, confronted with the reality of a powerful and holy God, terrified beyond belief, so much so that we just start mumbling and and babbling incoherently. We are the disciples. When our Lord Jesus demonstrates His glorious divine nature, we're terrified. And the Greek word here used that we translate as terrified, it really gives, it literally means sort of like the sort of fear that you're shaking and rattled, and if you could muster the courage, you would run away as fast as you can. That's the reaction of the disciples getting the sign, the glorious Jesus. Now, why are they terrified? They're terrified because in the presence of a holy and righteous God, our sinfulness, our uncleanness cannot be hidden. What does Peter say when he first encounters Jesus and finds out who he is? He says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. That's what's going through their minds as they're confronted with who Jesus really is. He's the Son of God, which I'm sure they thought they understood before this moment, and then Jesus just blew that notion out of the water. And if we're honest, we are like the disciples. When we come into the holy presence of God, we're afraid. We're afraid that the deep, dark, sinful secrets of our lives will be laid bare, and if He finds that out, He won't love us, and all that power and glory and majesty will instead be a vision of judgment, and a judgment that, frankly, we agree with. Yet despite the majesty and the fear of the vision of God's glory today, They're not destroyed. They're not judged. In fact, if you look at the action of this text, it's all Jesus drawing in His disciples. He didn't show them this vision to frighten them in judgment, but to show them who He really is and who it is exactly that is leading them who is for them. I mean, you look at this image of Jesus today, and I think of the verse, if God is for us, who can be against us? It's a pretty good place to be, that God is for us. In my office downstairs, my sister made this for me because she knows I love C.S. Lewis and the Chronicles of Narnia, and there's a little placard in there that says, he is not a tame lion. Jesus isn't weak. He is powerful and mighty. And what we're discovering through the journey into the season of Lent 
This is a foretaste of what is to come in the resurrection of Jesus. Even the movements in the text today echo the resurrection. Jesus draws His disciples in and brings them up to a mountain to reveal His glory. And He will do so again when He rises from the dead and when He ascends into heaven. The season of Lent is framed by these two unbelievable signs, a foretaste of the resurrection here at Transfiguration and the resurrection itself on Easter. And in between this time, Jesus' passion, His arrest, His beating, His crucifixion and death, they're all visual events much like this one. Visual events that for the disciples who have not yet received the Holy Spirit, they threaten to overwhelm them and terrify them. Because instead of listening to the words of Jesus, they're just looking with their eyes. And what do they see? They see Jesus arrested. They see Jesus shamed and beaten. They see Jesus killed. And all the while, He's been telling them that He must go and do this, but to not despair because He's going to rise from the dead. But also the text tells us multiple times He says those things and the disciples really don't understand what He's saying. But what their eyes tell them is that this is over. And Luke, with the disciples on the Emmaus Road, they're leaving Jerusalem because their eyes told them that Jesus was the Messiah. He's dead. Yet I think as we consider those moments, it's worth remembering that God the Father doesn't say, look at Him, but He says, listen to Him. So what has Jesus been saying? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. This kingdom is coming in power and might. This kingdom is coming not in judgment, but in grace. Jesus speaks of the mercy of the Father. He speaks of the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of your sins. He speaks of a new life given freely out of His grace. He speaks of redemption and salvation, not earned by your good deeds, but by His. Therefore, God the Father says, this is my beloved Son, listen to Him. Now, as we enter into Lent, it can be easy to be like the disciples on the mountaintop terrified, terrified by what we see. Maybe you're terrified by what you see in the world and you think it's falling apart. Maybe something terrible is happening in your own family. Maybe something terrible has happened in the neighborhood that you live in or in your own spiritual life. And if you're just looking at those things with your eyes, it can seem like it's over. Yet, you have heard His Word. You heard it today, and the week before that, and the week before that, and every time you open your Bible, you are doing what God the Father asks. You listen to Him. And through the hearing of His Word, the Bible teaches us that we receive the gift of faith. And through faith, we can now see through our ears, as it were, things that previously were hidden. Do not be deceived by your eyes and give in to despair. The way you behold the Lord Jesus, at least for now, is not by looking at Him with your physical eyes, but by hearing His Word and receiving it in faith. In faith, He is here today. And you know it and believe it to be true. And you can say that you see Him when a baby is baptized, that you see Him when you come to the Lord's table in the body and blood given and shed for you, that you see Him when you hear His Word. 
because He's promised to be here when people are gathered in His name. He has said so. So, dear friend, to going into Lent. Do not be deceived by the terror of your vision. Listen to the words of your Savior, a Savior who has revealed to us today that He has indeed come in power and might, but a power and a might in which He's using in service to your salvation, not in judgment of your sins. You see, when this scene occurs again and Christ rises triumphant over death, His disciples have quite a different reaction. At first, it's fear because they think He is a spirit. But in mercy, God reveals Himself again through His words and through His actions. And they rejoice. For now... Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, they see Jesus for the first time. A powerful and mighty Savior with all of the divinity and majesty of God who loves them, who has given those things up in service to their eternal salvation. He has done that for sinners like you and me. So don't let your eyes deceive you. Listen with your ears. Listen and see through the eyes of faith Him who has been sent to save you from your sins, Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen to Him. In the name of Jesus, amen.